Okay, so today I'm going to palpate the subscapularis. And the first thing I want to cover is the mechanics of the shoulder to gain access to the subscapularis. So I'm going to have her lock her elbow and she's going to bring her arm to 90 degrees. Okay, so at 90 degrees, if you're not familiar with the mechanics, uh, looking at the scapula, again, being on the back side of her body, in order for her arm to get to 90, the scapula had to upwardly rotate. So imagine the scapula going in this direction. So let's say it starts from here and then it kind of rotates up. It'd be about 30 degrees of upward rotation, approximately 30 degrees of upward rotation. But because her arm is moving in the sagittal plane, and we call that motion of her arm in the sagittal plane flexion, her scapula would also, being on the back side here, it would also protract. So we have two things going on. She flexes her arm to 90 degrees, and we have a scapula that upwardly rotates. Okay, so it goes in this direction. So it's starting from here, and it's upwardly rotating to approximately here. And it would rotate about 30 degrees. And then at the same time that it's doing that, it's also going to protract. So I'm going to first gain access to this area of the scapula. And I'm going to compress the subscapularis into the subscapular fossa. And then I'm going to work my way from there. So just to give you a couple common scenarios, is I definitely will start here. I look at this as working smarter and not harder because you know in most cases you can get here and then work your way from here. It's not uncommon that I'll stay on this lateral border on the anterior side, and then from there I might be able to work my way medially, you know, so that I can gain access to here. But I try to section this out. And again, look at it like a Sharpie, and I'm trying to cover as much area as I can through here, as much area as I can through here, and then of course, as much as I can through here. But what I'm gonna do initially is I'm just gonna gain as much access as I can to the subscapularis attaching to the subscapular fossa as I can in order to ultimately come back and maybe just fine tune some things to make sure that I cover the entire subscapular fossa or the entire subscapularis that's attaching to the subscapular fossa. So if you're not familiar with the subscapularis, the subscapularis is a rotator cuff muscle. It's one of four rotator cuff muscles and it's um, one of the bigger of the four. So another example of a big rotator cuff muscle, uh, big meaning size, would be on the opposite side of the scapula, which is the, on the posterior side. So this is the infraspinatus fossa that is below the spine of the scapula. And the infraspinatus muscle, being on the opposite side of the subscapularis muscle, is attaching all along this infraspinous fossa of the scapula. So this side of the scapula is actually going to face the table so the muscle that's closest to the table for her right now is the infraspinatus. Then you would have the bone, the infraspinous fossa, and then you'd have on the anterior side, the subscapular fossa and then the subscapularis, okay? It just so happens, and you can see it pretty well here, if she does horizontally adduct the arm, you can see that the scapula does follow in this case. But there are a lot of times, I would say, especially with females, where the scapula doesn't follow the arm. And that's really an indication that there's a the timing at which the arm and the scapula are moving is off. And that would be an example of instability. So it'd be something that you'd want to look at with you know ultimately a lot of different muscles. But at this point, just recognizing that if I move the arm into horizontal adduction or horizontal flexion, that scapula is going to follow the arm and we would call that protraction of the scapula or abduction of the scapula. So that can really work out well for us as far as working uh, smarter and not harder. You can see just out of habit, I wanna kinda of take my hand here because I always I, I like to have my ha other hand in contact with the body, but I'm gonna keep my other hand out of this and I'm just going to use my left hand just so you can see as much as you can, okay? But what, what I'm gonna do initially is find that lateral border and then I'm going to slide onto that anterior surface. So right now I'm really close to that inferior angle and I'm on the anterior side here. 
and I'm going to compress this rotator cuff muscle into the subscapular fossa. And then once I do that, I'm going to add a friction where I'm going side to side uh, or back and forth. So I'm going up and down and side to side. And it's possible that you can't see my finger here, but just trust that if I'm going up and down and side to side, then I'm doing it in such a way that it's a very, very fine, small movement. And I feel that that smaller motion of the finger where I'm going side to side and up and down is not only adding friction when I compress the muscle into the subscapular fossa, but it's also allowing me to be more precise with my palpation. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna fall that lateral border up, and then I'm gonna work more medially from here in most cases. It really depends on what the body gives you. Okay, so whatever the body gives me as I'm working, I'm going to go there. So as I'm working, I'm kind of getting a feel for, you know, how, you know, what's gonna be the next area that I'm gonna cover Again, thinking of my finger as a Sharpie, you know, what's gonna be the next area that I can access? Like, how is the body opening up to me to where I can actually access more of that subscapularis? The other thing I would look at for her is there's a good amount of play here uh, with her scapula. So there are times where I might put my hand underneath the scapula and uh, just reinforce the other side of the scapula so that any force that I have going into the subscapularis that again is attaching to the subscapular fossa is actually going to be good force because the last thing I want is to be applying pressure uh, or compressing the subscapularis into the subscapular fossa and the scapula is moving away from me. Now I'm gonna work my way a little higher. And again, I'm gonna to switch to that right hand and see how that goes. Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna to have to stick with the left hand because there's no way I'm gonna get that angle uh, with, the, with the right hand. So coming in here again, kind of see my finger disappears. And then I'm going to compress the tissue into the scapula and I'm addressing that subscapularis a little higher now. And so I can't really see my finger because it disappears on this one, but it's disappearing um, no matter what I do, there's just no way to show that. Okay, so it's really, relatively speaking, pretty easy to get to that medial border now. So I work my way right, right away over to that area because that's the area. If there's anything right now that I haven't got, it's probably more of that medial border, which tends to be the case. I would say in most cases, the last thing you're going to access is the, the medial border. And if nothing else, I definitely always feel like I should go back and touch up you know, where I was on that medial border or how far uh, or how close I was to that medial border. So again, I'm being, um, I'm conscious of where I am relative to the scapula and where I am relative to the medial border as far as my direction of force. Okay, again, compressing that rotator cuff muscle into the scapula and then getting that that friction there okay and i gotta change the handle over there we go okay so then we get get in there a little bit more again getting closer to that medial border We got a lot of that medial border on that. And now I just have to work on getting a little higher to cover, you know, that area that's closer to the spine of the scapula. Okay, 
yeah, it's definitely allowed me in there pretty easily now. And the other thing you'll notice, and I'm noticing this right now, is that as you're working, you're actually getting closer and closer to the subscapularis on the subscapular fossa. So what I mean by that is, if you imagine that I, you know, take my finger and I push into the table, right? So I'm taking my finger and pushing into the table. I'm technically, I'm touching the bottom of the table, but how close to the bottom of the table I am. So this is a great example that when I first get in there, um, you know, feeling like I am in the area that I need to be, but as I'm working, I'm getting closer and closer to the actual subscapular fossa um, that's attaching to the subscapular, um, sub, I'm getting closer to the, as I continue to work, I'm getting closer and closer to the subscapularis as it attaches to the subscapular fossa. So that's something to think about or, or look for as well. Okay, so again, going to that lateral border, so we're gonna feel for that lateral border again. And then once I find that, then I'm gonna come up now higher. So I'm gonna use my left hand again. I'm gonna come up as high as I can, but I wanna start with that lateral border, just higher. And when I say lateral border, I wanna be, of course, anterior on that lateral border, and then work my way as far as I can to that medial border. Okay, so again, my finger unfortunately disappears here to where you can't see it, but hopefully you can see that I'm higher than I was, and you can also see the direction that my finger is pointing, right? So that again speaks to the angle of the scapula um, that's been created from just working on this subscapular fossa or subscapularis that's attaching to the subscapular fossa. Okay, so this is a little more sensitive, I think. Again, getting into that lateral border. Okay, and then once I do that, I will work my way across. Now that I've addressed the uh, entire subscapularis um, attaching to the subscapular fossa there, what I would do is I would then go over to the humerus. So if you're not familiar with the subscapularis, it's actually, the origin is actually the area that you saw me address today, and the other end of the muscle is attaching to the arm or humerus, which if you're not familiar with the landmarks on the arm or the humerus, there's a landmark on the arm or humerus called the lesser tubercle and the lesser tubercle is on the proximal humerus and the subscapularis would actually attach to that and most books would consider that the insertion so the reason i mention that is i can address the subscapularis the way you saw me today just addressing the origin but if i take an extra you know say five minutes to go over and address the lesser tubercle um, or the area where the subscapularis attaches to the humerus uh, at the lesser tubercle, I'm actually going to get a better result. So being that it only takes a couple minutes, it's worth addressing the other end of the muscle, um, meaning uh, what most books would call the insertion of the subscapularis.